another billion dollar casino project. That's B with billion. It was approved on the Canadian side and this will bring over 12,000 jobs to the Canadian economy. Mr. Lazio, why not have a casino built on this side of the border to help our economy? Well, frankly, I don't believe that it's a good idea for us to be building casinos. Uh, I think there are some that are already here. Uh, I would allow the state of New York to make these decisions. But in the end, I'm not a big fan of, of gambling. I believe, and I guess that's the way I grew up and the values that I grew up with, that people work hard, they live by the rules. Uh, there is no quick and easy gain. I understand that it's an important, uh, important issue, economic development in the area, but I would not focus on the quick hit, the cheap hit in gambling. I'd focus on the kind of jobs where our children can afford to stay here, raise a family, buy their own home. And those are not casino jobs. I'm talking about the kind of jobs in, in advanced technology, the kind of jobs that I have focused on as a member of Congress down in Long Island. Ask the people that I represent and the partnerships that I've built to help track students so when they go out of, out of state, they have a summer job and then a full-time job when they come back. To develop partnerships with our leading universities like Stony Brook or St. John's with our leading businesses. Those are the kind of alliances that actually work. This isn't just about talk, which is what my opponent does. This is about actually getting the job done, expecting high levels of excellence, and being able to work well with others. Well, Scott, I know how uh, hard the people in Niagara are working to try to turn their economy around. And uh, if they believe that a casino would help attract more tourists back to what really was the tourism capital of America for so many decades, uh, I would support that. I leave that to their judgment. But there has to be more of a strategy about the upstate economy. That's what I've been talking about. You know, I believe that we can bring the jobs of the new economy to upstate. And if we do what is necessary, tax credits to help jobs be created, the kind of broadband deployment so that we get more infrastructure for our computer industry, uh, creating the regional skills alliances, commitment to workforce development, as well as paying attention to agriculture and tourism, I think we can turn it around. To both the candidates, Mrs. Clinton first, the issue of trust and character has been raised repeatedly in this campaign. Mrs. Clinton, I want to start with you. In January of 98, you went on the Today Show and talked about what had occurred at the White House. I want to play that for you and our viewers and our voters and give you a chance to respond. So these charges came as big, uh, to, as big a shock to you as anyone? And to my husband. I mean, you know, he woke me up Wednesday morning and said, you're not going to believe this. But so when people say there's a lot of smoke here, there's, your message is where there's smoke? There isn't any fire. If an American president had an adulterous liaison in the White House and lied to cover it up, should the American people ask for his resignation? Well, they should certainly be concerned about it. Should they ask for his resignation? Well, I think that if all that were proven true, I think that would be a very serious offense. That is not going to be proven true. Regrettably, it was proven true. Do you regret misleading the American people? And secondly, at the, in that same interview, you said that those who were criticizing the president were part of a vast right-wing conspiracy. Amongst those eventually criticizing the president were Joe Lieberman. Would you now apologize for branding people as part of a vast right-wing conspiracy? Well, you know, um, Tim, that was uh, a, very, um, a very painful time for me, uh, for my family, and for our country. Uh, it is something that uh, I regret deeply that anyone had to go through. Uh, and I wish that um, we all could um, look at it uh, from the perspective of history, but we can't yet. We're going to have to wait until those uh, books uh, are written. But from my perspective, you know, I'm uh, very hopeful that um, we can go forward in a united way. Um, that certainly is what I've tried to do. And I've tried to be as forthcoming as I could given the circumstances that I faced. Um, obviously, I didn't mislead anyone. I didn't know the truth. Uh, and there's uh, a great deal of pain associated with that. And uh, my husband has certainly acknowledged that and uh, made it clear that he did mislead uh, the country as well as his family. But you mentioned trust. And, you know, I'm standing here running for the Senate. I didn't cast the votes that Newt Gingrich asked me to cast. 
I've been a steady, consistent voice on behalf of children and families and what I've worked for for 30 years, and I want to try to put that experience to work for the people of New York. In trying to unite people, however, is it appropriate to brand anyone who criticized the president as part of a vast right-wing conspiracy? Well, I certainly didn't mean to extend that to anyone who might criticize the president, especially after the truth came out. Uh, uh, you know I have the greatest respect for Senator Lieberman. I've known him for 30 years. He and I share a lot of the same concerns about media violence, for example. There have been a lot of books written about uh, this whole matter, and people are free to believe whatever they choose. Uh, but I think there is strong opposition in the country uh, to the vision that I share with many about what we'd like to do for our nation. You know, we just have a very different set of ideas about everything from the economy and education to, you know, strengthening families and providing health care. Um, and that's what I think uh, we should be focusing on are those kinds of issue differences. In your response, Mr. Lazio, would you also address your fundraising letter of July of 2000 where you said the first lady embarrassed our country? I stand by that fundraising letter. I stand by that statement. And I think that, uh, frankly, what's so troubling here uh, with respect to what my opponent just said is somehow that it only matters what you say when you get caught. And character and trust is about well more than that. And blaming others every time you have responsibility, unfortunately that's become a, a pattern, I think, for my opponent. And uh, it's, it's something that I, I reject. Uh, and I believe that, that New Yorkers reject. We can do well better. Mr. Lazzi, your credibility was brought into question earlier in this race when this television commercial ran throughout the state. Lazio and Moynihan made a difference. They're from New York. They're fighting for New York. Tell Lazio and Moynihan, keep fighting for us. Senator Moynihan wrote you a letter and said that you have never been photographed together, that this was misleading and was, quote, soft money fakery. He asked you to contact the Republican Leadership Committee who paid for that ad, the two members of the advisory board, George Pataki, Alphonse D'Amato, and your campaign said, we don't know how to reach them. Well, let me say, first of all, that ad did not come out of my campaign. I'm taking full responsibility for everything that my campaign does, whether it's the letter that you referenced or any commercial. The truth of the matter is, though, that I was the author and was the prime mover in the House behind the work incentives bill that this commercial was all about. The fact is, is that it did help disabled Americans go back to work and keep their health care benefits that it was an accomplishment, that I am a doer, that I did get the job done, that it was signed into law. And that's the truth of the matter. But why give the impression you're walking down the hall with Senator Moynihan when that was, in fact, dummied footage? Uh, listen, I, I, I don't stand for that. I reject that, but that's not my commercial. We would never have created that commercial or aired that commercial. Why not call George Pataki, Alphonse D'Amato, and say, take it off? No, it, it was taken off. At your request? It was, not, it, was, it was taken off. I think it ran its course, as a matter of fact. Mrs. Clinton? Well, um, I've been trying to run a campaign based on the issues, not insults, and I, I think that we've just seen a clear example of how difficult that is. You know, there are such big differences between me and my opponent. We differ on a patient's bill of rights. He's on the side of the Republican leadership and the HMOs. I'm on the side of the American Medical Association and the Nurses Association. We differ on the prescription drug benefit for Medicare. He sides with the drug companies. I want to make sure we have a drug benefit that covers everybody at an affordable cost. He has been on different sides of issues that are critical to the future of New York, like 100,000 police officers, 100,000 teachers, and the school modernization bill. But I guess that talking about the issues is something that he's not very comfortable about because he does have these votes and this record not just back when you were deputy whip to newt gingrich but in the last year or two but i think the people of new york want to know not who can write nasty fundraising letters or clever commercials that you know senator moynihan says are fakery but where we stand on the issues next question for mrs clinton from bob mccarthy Mrs. Clinton, you will recall your recent appearance at the Laborers Hall in Rochester uh, where you proposed at least six new programs or investments in existing programs that would require new spending. 
How are you going to pay for all these new programs and investments? Yes, there are projections of surpluses, but are you sure enough of those projections?